right, man. Like, let's not even waste any time. Let's, All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. Image. Image. So, you broke something down for me that it, it really didn't even occur to me until you said it. But let's go ahead, I guess, and tell them in terms of uh, what we're talking about in the corporate culture or just mm-hmm. in the workplace or mm-hmm. just in life in general. Mm-hmm. What is image? What are we looking at? Image. Okay. Definition, a perceived representation of an individual or a group. When you walk into a room, people perceive you no -hmm. matter where you are. So your image basically is the beginning of your perception. So whether you're at work or you're out, we see you, we watch you, and wow, that's your image. A couple different parts. Uh, dress is huge. It's huge. It's the first thing. If you're walking towards me before you can ever talk to me, I'm looking at what you're wearing. Right. That that that's what I thought. Oh, yeah, was. Yeah. I thought it was just that. No, but the, here's the other part of that. Your image is also your communication skills. What do you sound like when you're talking? And when I read an email, Ooh. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, even if you went to school, does it seem like it in the email? See, that's. I didn't think about that. It's called spell check. Wow. I didn't think about that at all. Yeah, grammar, okay. syntax. You know, do you sound intelligent? Right. Um, do we use all of the consonants? You know, several of us, <laughs> after hours, uh, understand that consonants are optional. Right. Uh, but during the work day, dude, we, 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 we've got to make people feel comfortable. So dress is huge because it's what I see with my eyes. Right. And you're perceived through your senses. Mm-hmm. But my ears perceive you uh, and who you are and make a judgment based on what I hear. And that's communication skills. Gotcha. Yeah. So, man, that, that, that one just opened up, opened up some, <laughs> some, some questions <laughs> for me. Because, quick story. Mm-hmm. I'm from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Okay, if mm-hmm. you haven't picked up on it by now, there's a slight, heavy <laughs> drawl <laughs> to my speech, right? Mm-hmm. But trust me, the way that I sound, mm-hmm. if you went back home with me, absolutely, oh, not even five minutes after touching down, absolutely, you'd see a stark difference between how I speak, absolutely, versus my what I call my native tongue, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Absolutely. so as a kid, like my mother used to always get on my case about my my speech and how I how I talked and things yes. like that because when I'm around my friends, you know, I'd like to blend in. Yes. Nobody ever likes to feel like they're outside Outsider. of the bubble. No. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I always just kind of spoke the way everybody else around me spoke. Absolutely. Now my mother um she was really great at enunciation. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And I think she even she left home and went to New Jersey for a while. So I think she had a little bit of Jersey in her. Oh, years, you know what OK. I mean? But, you know, coming back home, she even spoke way differently from her peers. Absolutely. And I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're two black brothers. Mm-hmm. But the response that you get is that, oh, you, you talk white. Oh, it happens. Which over the years it's just like there's no such I, thing. I hate that phrase. There's no such thing. Because there's no such thing. Absolutely. It's just called speaking properly Absolutely. and just enunciating, you know, Absolutely. when you need to. But she would always get on my case. And so of course what I learned to do was I learned how to flip the switch. Mm-hmm. When I when I'm with my peers, Absolutely. you can't understand the words that I'm saying if we go back home. I'd have to translate for you. Okay. Okay. Ask my wife. <laughs> but when I'm in a situation where, you know. You're in the corporate world. Corporate world or wherever or mm-hmm. I'm up front speaking or I'm doing things like this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The flip is switch. And it's just, it's 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 subconscious. It just Absolutely. happens. Absolutely. You know? But I, I have seen in my career thus far where, like you just said, the way that you communicate, the way that you talk. The way that you write your emails, et cetera, Absolutely. can have an impact on on your upward mobility. Right now, I, in my experience, and you, you tell me if this is if this is accurate too, mm-hmm. with you, there are certain exceptions to that mm-hmm. general rule. Mm-hmm. If English is not your first language, yes, okay, yes. 
because I just think that's fair. Absolutely. You know, it's just like us going to a, a, a country where English is not the first language. Absolutely. And trying to, you know, trying to communicate, trying communicate to get something done. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So communication and dress. Right. Okay. Now, and the reason is you're being judged. Now, you just alluded to something. You said, okay, when you decide you're going to turn on your Mississippi yes. accent, you're yes. home, you're relaxed. Right. You're not trying to sell yourself mm-hmm. as a person in the workplace or whatever. In fact, you're not even in the workplace. You're mm-hmm. relaxed, you're comfortable at home. That's good. And that group will judge you based on, hey, this is Brian. Mm-hmm. You know, he's back home. Right. Uh, when you go to the workplace, you're also being judged right. on how you communicate. And the sad thing is, the judgment doesn't have to be accurate, mm-hmm. but it is powerful. Mm-hmm. So, even though if the judgment is not right, for instance, and I'm going to give you an old uh, 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 story we had. Uh, I worked up north, mm-hmm. and we had a young lady from the south come up, and she talked slower, and she had a drawl, and she just, how y'all doing today? Right. And the northerner said, you know, she's not really that bright. So we want to talk slow to her like, you know, she wasn't where it was. She was the most devious human I have ever met in my life. Really? She was so smooth. How you doing? That was just the spider to the fly. She would wear you out. So the judgments that we make based on what we hear are not necessarily factual, but because humans judge, we just do. In the workplace, it does make a difference on what we sound like. And how we come across. Same thing with dress. Right. There's a judgment. It doesn't mean, uh, I know this, this gentleman, multi, multi, multi millionaire, he goes to buy all his cars dressed in coveralls and raggedy shoes. Yeah. Just to see what kind of service he's going to get. It's a game to him. Yeah. He could buy the dealership if he wanted to. Right. But he shows up in these coveralls and raggedy shoes to see who will give him service. And the ones that give him the good service, he surprises them. Buys the thing cash, and they are happier than don't know what. So that's so, how the world works. So two things that I'm noticing. Mm-hmm. One, the things you just said about uh, you're being judged. Mm-hmm. That is such a loaded topic. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're definitely going to have to set aside some time <laughs> in, in a future podcast to kind of go over this. Right. Because a lot, of, a lot of what we see as social norms are definitely replicated and experienced in the, in the workplace, Absolutely. just like they are outside of the workplace. Absolutely. So that's that. The other thing that I'm noticing in all of the conversations that we're having about pies, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. especially in the PIE part of pies, right. you almost, no, it's not almost, and I think this is the thing that some people are uncomfortable with. Mm-hmm. There are two different U's. Use as in Y O U. There's two different U's that you have to be. Absolutely. At work and outside of work. And that's part of the game. Absolutely. And I think that makes people uncomfortable because, in some way, they feel like, you know, in, in our community, we like to say keeping it real. Right. That, that's some part of it that makes them feel like that's being fake, which technically you are. Well, it, 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 it depends on what you. What you need to survive. Am I being fake if I go to France and have to speak French? No. Okay. Well, to survive in the workplace, you've got to speak American workplace. Mm. So whatever that language is, that's what you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you're at the end of the day, even if you're in France, if you're with someone that speaks English and they're with you, you talk English. Right. But it's a necessity that you speak French to get medicine, to order from the menu and end up with something you actually want to eat. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you need to speak the language where you're at. So I would say rather than view it as selling out, Mm -hmm. view it as how do I get my, what I want out of the situation? Because in reality, and this is going to be a weird concept, going to work is fake. The whole experience is fake. I don't want to sell this product. Right. I don't really care if this company uh, uh, books balanced. However, they pay me yeah. to bring value to their organization. Right. It's not mine. So in going to work, I am putting myself in a foreign situation. And all we're talking about is how do you succeed putting yourself in a foreign situation? They're not my family. I, I don't know these people. that exact thought. <laughs> I don't know how many times over the last 12 years. <laughs> the whole thing is fake. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's like I'm, I'm going into this place where 
Honestly, I really have no stake in the game other than I'm, I'm exchanging hours for a paycheck. That's it. But I have to care. Yes. Like the well-being of the company yes. really, really matters. To Absolutely. Me. And in a sense, it does because if they go down, I don't get a paycheck. Ah, uh, there we go. You know, you this for the quid pro quo. Right. This for that, baby. That's right. what it is. But in terms of like really having a passion for the thing that you're doing, yeah, like. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can have a passion for what you're bringing to the table. Uh-huh. And I believe okay. when we get yeah. to the S part, God expects us to bring our very best. Yeah. So I have a passion for what I'm doing. However, to lose sleep overnight, oh, oh, you know, all night on whether the CEO mm-hmm. is going to open up an office in Iceland mm-hmm. or one in Brazil, mm-hmm. I really don't care. Okay. So communication is our verbal communication. Yes. Our... Right. Our written communication. Absolutely. And also the cultural communication of the place that we're in. Absolutely, sir. Okay. That's it. Gotcha. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, dive head first into one of the ones that's probably going to be a little loaded. Oh, it's going to be. To say the least. Oh, and, man. And, and I say loaded because oftentimes, from my experience, when you start talking about dress in the workplace, it always, just always, the pendulum swings more and the focus swings more towards our ladies yes. than our guys. Yes. And let me just say for the record, mm-hmm. I totally feel like it's absolutely unfair. Abs- oh, absolutely. <clears throat> There's a lot of misogyny in corporate culture. There's a lot of misogyny in culture. In the in world. Social culture, absolutely. And... Uh, I think like it's something like you told me before. It really comes down to the dynamic of power. Absolutely, the people in the powerful places, whoever has the power, is the one who dictates Absolutely. the conversation and Absolutely. the focus and the rules. Absolutely. Um, so it's really we should be working towards finding a way to balance the power in our corporate situation. We, we we should be. Period. I, I just want to get that out yep. of the way so we that people be. understand our stance on the matter. Absolutely. And to understand also that what's about to come up is now telling. Our, our listeners, male and female, how do we take what the dictated rules are right now mm-hmm. to be able to get to a level where we can be able to change the Absolutely. culture? And even a slight promotion. For instance, they give you a small team mm-hmm. to work with. You are now, as a leader of that small team, able to promote fairness yes. and the right thing. And yes. I'm going to trust that we stay connected through the S because God expects you mm-hmm. to make your corner of the world better than when you found it. Yes. So yeah, uh, you know, uh, if if you're a believer and you get to the point where you are a manager and you are a supervisor, the people that report to you should experience uh, kind of God's hand in the workplace through you. Yes. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, we've got to get to those positions, and we know God wants to elevate people, but we kind of have to learn the rules of, of of the workplace in order to do that. So yeah, dress is going to come into now. There are there, there are issues that affect the men as well as the ladies. The issue is the discussion of fashion tends to be more female oriented than than male. Okay, so give us some 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 points and some things to pay attention to. Okay, uh, just in general, when it comes to dress in the workplace. In general, mm-hmm. male female. Here's a quote: What you are wearing is so loud. Or so distracting that I cannot hear what you are saying. Wow. Okay. So if whatever you have on can take away from the business discussion that we're going to have, you're wearing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Now, for whatever reason, the workplace seems to be a spot where people want to express their individuality and dress. (laughs) Okay. And we all do. We all, you know, I get up and put on a shirt I like. Yes. You get, but- now, older experience, you know, having learned some things the hard way, I'll now realize the audience that I'm playing to. Right. Now, as a consultant, I go into different Fortune 500 companies. I realize my size. Nearly 6'2", 250 plus, look like a football player. Yeah. Deep, deep, deep tan. <laughs> now, I am very much aware of what I look like. Right. So... I could put on a golf shirt, right? pair of slacks, walk in, and you said, dude, this dude's arms are about 20 inches. Yeah. That would distract from me 
making the pitch about how I can help you fix your company. See, it okay. culturally could cause a problem depending on who I'm talking to. Yes. So if I'm dealing with somebody that feels the least bit threatened or watches the news, mm -hmm. um, that's not going to be a plus. So I'm not focusing on what I'm wearing. I'm focusing on I need to connect with you and build a relationship. Right. So therefore, my dress is going to not get in the way of me building relationships. And since I'm old school, going conservative, shirt and tie, sport coat, very, very easy to do. It's the it's the accepted mm -hmm. dress in business. So that's what we do. But taking that to the younger generation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're definitely more open or focused on individuality. Yes. And genuineness. Absolutely. Being what, real. What's authenticity. Right. Right. And all of that kind of relates to being comfortable with who you are and then also unapologetically yes. not wanting to bend or, or fit a mold or Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not wanting to be put in anybody else's box, basically. Right. Because right. because a lot a lot a lot of the thought of that goes to again, I guess the word that we keep saying is non existent, fairness. Absolutely. Right. Doesn't exist. It's not fair that if I'm a a person of color right. and I want to wear dreadlocks, that is not generally accepted. It's not okay? fair. Or not that it's not accepted, but it's not It's not the preferred look. It's not the preferred look. Right. No, by people who don't have dreadlocks. Right. <laughs> or it's not fair if, if I'm a young lady mm. and, you know, I want to, like, I can, I can come in to work mm -hmm. tastefully dressed, mm -hmm. but it's high fashion. Absolutely. That I'm not looked at for my intelligence. Absolutely. It's not fair. Absolutely. You know. Uh, and the same thing goes go goes to the guys too with Absolutely. with with the way that the uh, some of the guys dress Absolutely. with the hairstyles and the haircuts and uh, tattoos. Oh, know, is, is is a big thing now. Covered up. Yeah, the same thing that they're not looked at for their intelligence, but they're just by right. their appearance. Uh, you, you mentioned box, right? And people don't want to be put in a box, right? And I agree 100% that there's no reason to fit in the box, except when you apply for a job, you are applying to be put in a box. Right. Because your only value to that organization is to fit in that box. Mm -hmm. So even as entrepreneurs and owning your own business, and by the way, you're able to do a lot more on the individuality and the way you dress mm -hmm. when you own your own business. Right. However, when I come to a corporate workplace that I do not own, that has someone else's name on the door, yeah. whatever it is, if they expect me to look a certain way, for that paycheck, I basically have given them permission to judge what I bring into the workplace. And that, it is, it's their workplace. Yeah, and, and that word, I think, brings up some uncomfortable things. Too. Absolutely. Just because, like, especially today, a lot of the conversation about what's going on socially yes. oh uh, my. in this country has oh to do with prejudice and oh, judgment absolutely. and stereotypes. Absolutely. And, you know, just, um, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much like those words, right? Right. So It's to, not fair and it's wrong. Right. To say that now we have to turn around and kind of accept those things on a certain level mm -hmm. in our workplace mm -hmm. and just kind of manage them, ride the waves a little bit, mm -hmm. not buck the system, not uh, not push back. Uh, I think that kind of sits a little odd with people. Well, first of all, it doesn't feel good and it's not fair. Right. So let's just get that on the table right now. Right. This don't feel good and, and it's, it's not fair. fair. But we've already established this. It's not fair. It's not existing. And your whole work existence at work will not be based on fairness. It'll be based on your ability, with God's help, to navigate the sharks and the demons that are waiting on you. That's, That's how your success is coming from. That's killing me but right th now. But yeah. there will not be Me, for instance, man, years ago, uh, as a corporate trainer, right. uh, I trained with a lady, love her to death. She was very well endowed and very blessed. Mm -hmm. And so we'd go out to do these uh, sessions. And we had this big Fortune 500 company we went out to do seminar sessions with. And um, 
She always wore a sport jacket. Right. Okay. Always covered up, always tastefully, I'm going to say ultra conservative. Right. So one day we did a session on diversity. Mm-hmm. And she went to deal with gender, mm-hmm. the challenge. Same thing we're talking about here. Yes. So she took off her jacket and put it on the side of her chair. And at that moment, there were no men that looked her in the eye for the next five minutes. So wrong. Okay. So she continues to talk. She's very poised. And I love training with her because, oh, she was just brilliant. She puts her jacket back on. And about three minutes in, she says, now, can any of the gentlemen tell me why we lost eye contact for the last 10 minutes? Wow. I've never seen a room full of guys' faces turn that red. And she basically said, we were talking about diversity. That is the challenge that women face when they walk into the room dealing with you guys. Because diversity does not just mean race. Oh, diversity no. Diversity means gender no. any, as well. Difference. Yeah, any difference. Any difference. Right. And what happens is the, 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 the workplace culture is dictated by white male values. So people can get mad. They can right. say it's not fair. Right. Uh, when you get finished being mad and saying it's not fair, get over yourself. Now, let me ask you, how will you survive that? Because that's where the power is. That's where the power is. Okay. And the issues that people are having, they're challenging that. And the status quo, yeah, it pretty much sucks for a lot of people right. that aren't of that ilk. That's not who they are. So they're looking around. And I'm, you know, to be very fair, I talked to white male managers who look at the status quo and said, This sucks. This is horrible. So to even yeah. lump, you know, anybody in a group, that's yeah. just horrible. They're saying, this is not going to be tolerated. I do some work now for a gentleman. And he said, that behavior is never going to be tolerated here. And I watch, he lives what he says. Yes. And he, he's an awesome, awesome, awesome executive. But traditionally, the people that are pushing back, you know, you have your tattoos, you have your, you know, you look like this when you come in. It's not going to be accepted in the culture of most workplaces. Most. And I like I like what you said most. Because it, even what you just talked about, we, we don't really hear the stories about the... The powerful, oh, absolutely. The powerful top, yeah. Having those values that you just talked about, absolutely. And pushing to change the culture of the organization. You don't absolutely. hear those stories. You hear the other stories because that's the majority. Yeah, right, right. Um, I saw a um, it was a while ago. I saw an article about a CEO at a pretty large company, and the whole thing was about how he they saw him out in public and he had short sleeves on. Mm-hmm. He had two arms full of, full of tattoos. I love it. Love and I was it, like, yo, that's yes. dope. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, he's a CEO? Yes. Because I had never seen that before. Yes, yes. They're you people know? too. Right. And and it's like we're so conditioned inside and outside of our workplace to judge based on stereotypes, based on cultural things that we were taught when we grew up. Absolutely. All of it. We're conditioned to do this. I had a boss that I absolutely loved, worked for him in Several different places. Mm-hmm. Loved him to death. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were on an airplane, he had a suit on. Mm-hmm. The quintessential, I'm talking about good looking, the mingling gray hair around the temples. <laughs> right. I mean, good looking dude. Yeah. Just just uh, fun. Man, you, I could not have asked for a better boss. He had tattoos and drove Harleys. Mm-hmm. But you would never have been able to put his work persona in with his other persona. And by the way, he was an incredible proponent of fairness in the workplace. One of the, just outstanding in that area. When he saw the things that we're talking about that weren't fair, he immediately was on it. A couple of cases that I watched him handle where uh, uh, there was misogyny and, you know, uh, women being objectified swiftly, uh, uh, powerfully, and done. Yeah. Taken care of because that was his value. So even when we look at the bad stuff that happens in the corporate work world, there's a new generation of managers that are coming out now yeah. that are definitely against it. Uh, that's that's very encouraging. Abs- absolutely. So, got a few minutes left. Here's here's what I want to say, and then mm-hmm. I, then I'm, I'm gonna throw something out to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely two topics that more than warrant <laughs> their own series, their own, se- their own series of podcasts yes. from us. Yes. Uh, how race plays into this image thing. Oh, absolutely. And how gender plays into this image thing. Huge. Uh, two things that we I definitely want us to tackle separately. 
Um, and you know, we, we find guests and kind of bring them in and we can talk about it, get more insight. Yes. And then just also kind of start to talk about different ways that we can begin to push culture change wherever we are. Absolutely. As we're going up the ladder. Absolutely. While playing the game. Absolutely. <laughs> well, managing relationships. Managing relationships. Sorry. <laughs> managing relationships. All right. But before we get out of here, here yeah. here's kind of what I want to do. Basic pointers. Okay. For guys and girls. Okay. Walking into work every day. Okay. How do you, like, what, 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 what would you say? How do you, how do we present ourselves? Okay. Okay. In a way that will, you know, kind of push some of those things that we just talked about to the side and allow the, those above us who we need to manage the relationships with to, so see, positive, us in, to see us in a positive, positive light. life. Here are a couple of quickies. I like to see people err on the side of being conservative. Okay. Uh, I don't care how cute or good looking you are. I'd rather see you I err on the side of conservative in style mm -hmm. and even in color. Okay. Let's start with the guys. Give me some specifics. The guys. Uh, if it is casual day. I like long sleeve shirts. Right. A couple of guys I know got guns. Mm -hmm. You know, they buffed up. They're very proud of it. Right. The workplace is not that spot. Gotcha. Okay. Case in point, I watched a guy, buff, smart, whatever. The senior guy over him was jealous of the attention he was getting from the young lady. We sit in meetings and we discuss you. Senior guy said, I think he needs more seasoning. So I've seen that. I've been in meetings where the young lady wears her short skirt. God blessed her very, 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 very right, well. Right. I've seen in meetings, well, we're not quite sure if she's ready. The sad thing is they're being judged. Yes. And you're not in the room. Yeah. So whatever you wear, somebody is talking about you in a room. Somebody above you is talking about that part. When there's nothing, when it's very conservative, and uh, here's, here's, here's the rule I really have. No skin. Show yeah. no skin. Period. And no lumps or bumps in your clothes. Those two rules. And that goes for guys. Whether, <laughs> whether it's muscles. Yeah. Whether it's stomach. Yeah. Whatever it is. No bumps or lumps in your clothes and no skin. And if everybody follows that, you're good. Because that means now in a meeting, there's nothing that you wore that distracted me. Right. Which means now we can talk about your work. Right. Um, so, for example, where I am, yeah. the four days a week is business casual. Got it. Okay. Uh, Fridays are jeans. Oh. Okay. So, typically, hmm. my, my attire is slacks and a button up. Yep. Or slacks and a polo. Got it. So that, that cool? You're, you're safe. Okay. But you're kind of big, so the polo, don't let the polo get too tight. Because <laughs> if you've never seen this brother, he's definitely a lineman for some pro football team. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not a spandex guy. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's, it. that's business casual, and I love that. Yeah. Because some people have confused business casual with uh, T-shirts that have writing on them. Yeah, no. You know the even, name of your favorite rock band. Even even on Fridays when I'm wearing my jeans, I usually have a button. Up same up, same here. All right, yeah. we're we're on same page. All right. Same page. So so then for our ladies, and, and yes. this, this is a tough one because you know like it's really easy to misconstrue. You know, asking a young lady to kind of tone down some of her dress yes. or to change in yes. any way it can be easily misconstrued. Yes, with blatant misogyny. Absolutely. Or, or prejudice, but that's oh. not the case. We're we're really here trying to just kind of give pointers and tips that kind of help, like we say, cut through the malaise Absolutely. of that the, of that judgment, so that people can notice you for your your efforts and your work versus what your appearance. Well, here's it. I can tell you what's happening on the other side of the door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I mean, okay, ahead, you know, door, when, 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 when we say misogyny, mm -hmm. if if I'm sharing with you, and and uh, my wife talks about it all the time, there's a look. In fact, Coco Chanel said this. Ladies need to be a caterpillar by day and a butterfly by night. Right. Our evening attire versus our day attire should be different, and that's for all of us. If right. you see me after five, I'm in the store, yep. shopping, whatever, that's me. During the day, I'm not going to let anything that I wear get in the way of our communication. That's whether it's dress, hair, mm -hmm. style, right. whatever that is, that cannot get in the way of communication. And if it does, if I'm more focused on setting a 
image about my dress rather than my work, I probably have my priorities wrong. Mm. 